Hi, I'm Cody Alexander with MatchQuarters.com. Today we're going to talk about third down fronts, third down packages, kind of how you should go about it, how to personnel it. Whether you're a four down or a three down, it really doesn't matter. The, the thing you want to do on third down is get to the quarterback. If it's, a, if it's a passing down, you want to make sure that you have created opportunities for your players to get one-on-one -on -one matchups and to win those one-on-one -on -one matchups. The other thing about it is, hey, we want to manipulate protection. We want to create man-on-man -man blocking. And we want to put our best guy on their worst guy and create that one-on-one. -on -one. So the two best ways to do that, and really if you break it down, uh, everything turns into a bare front. And the reason why that happens is because you created five-man blocking. You put five guys in front of the five offensive linemen. Now, the part of this is who takes the back and what does the back do. And that's how you manipulate with the pressure is, is do they release them? Well, if they release them, then it's man on blocking. If they keep them in, is, he, is it a slide protection and he sits on the edge? Or is it big on big and he's sitting in the middle waiting for a backer? So what you want to do then is create a two-on-one -on -one with, the, with the running back, either through simulated pressure or your regular pressure package. But the key is getting guys in the right place. And the best two ways to do that is an overload front and a bare front. And so first, let's talk about the overload front. So here you want to have a field in, a boundary in, a reel in, a tackle, and then your mic, and then your money or your will linebacker. But you're like, Coach, hey, there's, there's like – four defensive ends on the field, how do I how do I know which is which? So usually what you want to do is whichever tackle is the weakest one, you want to set the overload away from them. So let's just say they've got a weak left tackle, um, and we're, we want our boundary edge rusher to be the guy that's getting the one-on-one. -on -one. And so what the overload does is we've really put three big guys on one side. And so what they're going to end up doing is they're going to have to slide protection over that way. Your field boundary, your field and boundary edge rushers are really gonna. They can be personnel. It could be your best linebacker rusher. It could be your jack backer if you're three by one. Maybe you have uh, in most four downs you have one DN that's really good at edge rushing. Maybe you make him the field, the field rusher. Your end is maybe your five technique because he's gonna be playing on the interior. Somebody who can play a heavy five and get inside, go one on one with a guard. Your tackle, if you're a four down, would be your three technique. He's got to be able to set contain sometimes, especially. If we're going to run some simulated pressures uh, or we're going to attack the edge of a slide. Let's say we're getting them to slide this way and we want, we want, uh, we want him to set contain. So again, you want, you don't want to keep your 300 pound a gap plugger nose in there on third down. You're just not going to get a rush. So you can manipulate it in a way. And again, all you have to do is make sure the guys know where they're going and make sure that you teach that. So here, we're going to put our tackle here. We're going to put our mic, who, again, most defenses, your mic linebackers maybe a little beefier kid. Maybe he's somebody that you don't mind going one-on-one -on -one with a guard. And then your money backer or your will linebacker in a 3-4 or, or a 4-down front. So essentially what you have is one, two, three, four down linemen and your two backers. Now, you can put, you can obviously, let's say you've got a mic linebacker. Man, he's really good at edge rushing. He's really good at, at, at blitzing. We want him to get some one-on-ones, and so we'll put him in the field or we and put him in the boundary. So, for the sake of uh, doing this, let's talk about the overload. So, we got a field and end and a, and a tackle. So, we've got a mugged up mic, but we're going to get the, the overload side of this because it's where the big guys are. So, they're going to they're going to overload this side. We're going to pop him out. It really doesn't matter. But what you want in the overload really is to attack here and here and really get what you're getting is these one on one blocks with these tackles. So you might be able with the stab and release, he can sling. But if you can, if you get him to pause and freeze here, you might be able to get that tackle to cross face, especially if they have the weak center. So this is an easy, easy way of just getting a four down rush off of an overload when you know they're gonna slide. So he's gonna set here. He may set here thinking that freeze. Now he's late to this. We may get that to pop. He picks up on the stair step as he kicks out. Now we've got our one-on-one -on -one with the field rush. Uh, some things that you can do off of this, obviously, is, is give the freedom of one guy or the other, that if he dips around, then now he comes outside. If he stays outside, he can just kind of sit there sit there in the window. Uh, so that we kind of, you give that kind of a, a freedom call. Hey, you've got a freedom call. You can up and under. And then if he goes underneath, then he kind of just squats in that B gap. So that's your overload front. Kind of one of the most popular ones is the bare front. It's the easiest one to get into, I think, for a lot of three down teams. This is this is easy to get into, and for four down teams, it's easy to get into. You put your field and boundary edge rushers. You got your end and your tackle. Again, you're taking the nose out. 
all you got to do. So if I'm a four down team, uh, I take the nose out. I put another. I put another D end in, uh, or my my other three tech in, and now I've got an end and two tackles and an end, and I just put the mic there. Now the sam uh, the the money will obviously move around depending on the back and the formation, but just for for this sake, we're gonna put them right here in the middle. But what we have created is kind of the same thing. Now we've created man blocking. Uh, and what you want to do in the bear front, and some of the some of the really good ones in the bear front, is really because you've got man blocking, is you create looping stunts uh, to kind of get yourself into uh, get yourself into where he this guy can't block him. He's if he did, he would have to come all the way back around. And there's not a lot of guys that are going to do that. Uh, so you can do that here. You can move, move these guys around. Maybe you have the mic out here. If you're if you're a three down team, you put your hands over here. You put your inside you put your inside backers here. And now you can kind of manipulate that and get those looping stunts out of this. Uh, the other good one is kind of a hug rush where if you have the back over here, he flares out, he peels. Now he rushes and inserts off of that guy. So that's another way of getting at, at least getting that that pressure package there. So third down package. Two main fronts, overload, bear. Let's dig into overload here. So here's a really good simple pressure from the overload front that we did this year that we had success with. What it really does is it puts pressure on uh, the line because they're going to have to man block it. So even with the mic mugged up like this, they're gonna that guard has to honor him. So you might be able to steal the tack the, the nose. And with the tackle kind of doing a twist, like I've showed here, the tackle's going first. He's gonna try and pin that tackle and climb to contain. Whereas the end's gonna take a step, pull that tackle out, and then come wrap right back around. So if you see this, you know, the, the tackle's first. He's gonna stab to and work to contain, he's gonna stab and work to the A gap. If the back steps up, the mic can add in. You can have him add in or create it where it's a spy opportunity. You want the jack to build contain, and this way you get your man blocking. So again, even with the overload, you want to create that either they're pushing there or it's man blocking. And with man blocking, you've created your one-on-one. So again, like I went at the beginning, you talk about it. It's just bare front. It's just who you put where. So again, when you're sitting here trying to create these third down packages, you don't have to be exotic about it. You, you just maybe you personnel it and you move guys around and then you just put guys where they can get that one on one blocking. Maybe you've got an edge rusher. Maybe this is a slide team. So we want to make sure we attack the edge. If they're one of those, it's kind of a, a big on big or a man blocking. Like I'm just going to take the guy in front of me and they're kind of moving out. Then that's when you bring an insert from maybe outside or the secondary right up the middle uh, to kind of get that two on one on, on that on that running back. So this is a great one that we have for us and, and I'll show you a clip and talk you through it. So here you have our overload package. You can see our end in and then we ended up moving our nose inside. You've got your mic and your wheel right here. So we ended up using our mic as our edge rusher. He was our best player this year so we ended up using him. So again here's another example of it's the blitzer not the blitzes. So we want to put him. We wanted to get him on the one on one. Now this team in particular would just go ahead and man block it if you go showed a, a five man front. So this is essentially what we got and we've kind of got two men on the back end. Now this is third and long. So you can see here's the here's the rush that we, I showed you earlier. You can see right here as the nose goes over, again, would like the backer to stab and go. As the nose goes over, he's going to take these two, and you can kind of see that nice path that's created here for, here for the defensive end. So as he comes in, he gets the backer. Now the guard ends up coming off of him. Uh, actually, the tackle ends up following him back. This is pretty impressive for a high school. So the the – Tackle ends up tracking him all the way through, and we end up getting the double. Now, you can see on the end zone copy, Mike Linebacker doesn't do a good job. He tacks down the center, should be tacking, attacking on the outside, really trying to set that edge. As we get him coming back, he should be looking at the he should be looking at the back. The moment that the back blocks and doubles the end, his eyes should come back to the quarterback. Now that you know, it's still high school. It doesn't necessarily happen. The moment again we lose contain, that's one of our better players at DN. So he comes through uh, and chases the guy. We've got again our Mike linebacker chasing him down, trips him up, uh, and we've got pursuit and live to play another down they end up punting and third downs over so again i'll let that run through uh for you from the wide angle so you can see it better so right here we get the loop we get the double 
in keeps going, cuts him off. Again, I would like that backer not to necessarily float over. The moment that he sees him block, let's go ahead and sit there uh, and, and chase down the quarterback. So, again, it's winning third down. We won third down. So even though it was third and 12, he gets a three-yard gain out of that. So, again, that he, but he doesn't throw the ball. We force the scramble. We end up getting a tackle. It's not a sack, but, hey, we live to see another down. They punt the ball. We get the ball back to our offense. So here's a simple four-man pressure that we did out of our bear front this year that was really successful. It really targets the guard. Again, when you get into these bear looks, you want these looping stunts because you can actually pin guys. And the guy, remember, it's man blocking. So the guy that's in charge of the looper, he can't get to that guy because he just got pinned by somebody. So here's a good one that we had. We had the mic mugged up with the A-back. He was in charge of him. The nose is actually going to take the center, and he's going to pin the guard as the wheel loops around to the A. So if we end up do getting him stepping up, that Mike is kind of spying the quarterback or you could eventually have him kind of add back in, maybe pop out and then kind of add back in later on. That's kind of a, a kind of, you know, you want to layer it like an onion. So we're going to start out rudimentary and then add those layers. So how that would work would be now you pop him out, the back steps up, have him take the outside, if he gets latched on or he fans out, now insert back in. So that's another way of getting that kind of five-man rush. Um, you could also do if he flares out, hug rush it. As he peels, let him come off the edge. That's kind of the popular thing to be doing nowadays too, especially if you're in your six-down pressure, six-man pressures, and you've got a peel guy. Is get into these kind of simulated pressures pop a guy out, let him read the back, if the back goes peel, and then I'm just inserting where the DN was, uh, kind of pulling guys away. So, again, this was a really good pressure for us, and, and I'll talk you through it here in a second. So here is our bare front pressure that we have. If you look at it personnel-wise, we have our end, we have our mic, we have our will, we have our quick nose. Uh, we had two noses this year. One was quicker than the other, and we put in our, our quick nose for third down, and then we have our other D-end. You can see that our, our boundary backer is off, and so is our, our nickel. Now on this one, we insert uh, for an extra rush, or we kind of insert the, the guy for over here but just for the sake of it, it's the same stunt that I showed before so let's go ahead and take a look at it so you can see right now at the snap of the ball we're gonna loop right now so he's gonna stab and replace now we would like for him to bring this bring his eyes in so the ends gonna go up he's actually supposed to knife down which would bring him here we have him here and you can see now that the eyes of the running back are directly here. So this, we would like him also to kind of stab and then release and not quickly go. Even so, you can see that you've got, really, you've got two guys locking on that at that nose right here, and you get your one-on-one -on -one with the D end over here who is, is supposed to be setting contain. So let's let this run through. So you can see right here, as he's coming across, that guard rocks back to him at the last second for the will and kind of knocks him off his path. But what does that quarterback have? That quarterback can't step up, and now he's got to throw the ball quickly. If he doesn't, it's going to be a sack. So for us, this is, this is kind of what we wanted. The other coaching point, like I said, is as he's coming up here, this guy is really supposed to hit in here to kind of draw this guy because what you want is to create him to kick and then bringing his eyes over here. You kind of want to steal three guys with two and then let that Will linebacker come in across. So, again, this is an easy, easy blitz to put in. Uh, like we said, we inserted an extra guy on it, and I'll let it run through right here so you can see. So that's your bare mug front. So hopefully you found this uh, beneficial for you. Remember, even if you have just a typical 3-4 or a 4-down, you can always find ways to get into these 5-man fronts and these overload pressures. I just gave you some simple 4-man four, four rush pressures where you, you're simulating that you're bringing 5, getting that man blocking, and then dropping a guy out, either hug rushing or having that guy get into coverage. So again, these are cheap ways to attack an offense on 3rd-down. Now in terms of personneling it, think blitzers, not blitzes. How do I get my guy in a one-on-one? -on -one? And like I said here, personnel your third down. Keep, keep the blitzes and the pressures that you have the same. The, the blitz patterns are, are the same that you have or the twist stunts that you have. But just put guys in situations where they're going to be in one-on-ones. I think that's the key. Again, you want who's the blitzer, not the blitzes. 
but doing so, find ways to get that guy in a, either a one-on-one -on -one with a weak tackle or a one-on-one -on -one with a weak guard, finding ways to either pin guys or use the, the blocking techniques of the offense against them. And that's kind of the key in this. If you look at it, these are just two bare fronts that I drew up here. But what we did is we put the personnel in different places. You know, if they're a big slide team, get in an overload, force a slide, and, and then attack them with the jack as your best rusher. If they're, if they're going to go man blocking, get in a regular bear front and who's your fastest linebacker or who's your kind of your big time guy that you have at linebacker, your best one, and get him coming across and really charging down. You know, one thing for us was we were able to, our Mike linebacker is one of the best in the district. We're just going to send him through the A-gap. Uh, we trust him against the back any day. And, and then even on the, on the overload, we'll take our DN on a back any day, putting that pressure in that quarterback's face and either forcing them to scramble, running them down for a little gain, or getting a sack off of it. And, and really, if you think about it, it's a cheap sack because you only rush four. So hopefully this helped you. As always, my DM's open. You can hit me up with questions. Uh, you can find me again on matchquarters.com or on Twitter. Follow me at the underscore coach underscore A. Thank you for joining me, and come learn the art of X.